Let's talk to uh, the former Conservative uh, leader, uh, that's uh, Sir Ian Duncan-Smith MP. Good morning to you, Sir Ian. Uh, good morning. Thank Gina. you very much indeed for joining us. Um, uh, lots of issues to talk about regarding Afghanistan. And, and I want to talk about the important stuff of getting people in Afghanistan out of the country and getting them to safety. However, a lot of the front pages are focused on whether or not Dominic Raab, Foreign Secretary, your former comrade uh, in the uh, in the com in the government when you were in government uh, to actually uh, uh, resign. Um, now, um, the claim is Dominic Raab was on holiday in Crete. Luxury hotel seems to be part of the criticism. He should have been in a rotten hotel, not a nice one. And yes. the criticism <laughs> seems to be that but, um, he shouldn't have gone on holiday. Once on a holiday, he should have worked throughout his holiday. And when asked to make a phone call, he shouldn't have delegated it to his uh, uh, junior <coughs> minister, uh, Lord Goldsmith. We were told that that phone call was then made by Lord Goldsmith. Turns out it wasn't made. Turns out the Afghan foreign minister wouldn't accept a phone call from anyone other than the foreign secretary. And as it was, of course, the government collapsed uh, the next day anyway. Do you think anything would be any different right now for any British citizen or any Afghan interpreters and their families desperate to leave uh, uh, Afghanistan if Dominic Raab had made that phone call last Friday? No, I don't. Um, I rather agree with the uh, Secretary of State for Defence, Ben Wallace, who said yesterday that uh, that member of the government and the government itself was in complete freefall by the Friday. Uh, over Friday, Saturday, uh, they weren't controlling anything. Um, and uh, the president pretty much fled uh, very shortly, either after or around about that time anyway. So, first of all, you know, we need to kind of get this in perspective. Was the government caught out? Yes. Well, the Americans caught out, absolutely. Uh, did they make decisions in the run to this, the Americans particularly, uh, that um, now in hindsight uh, may turn out to have been uh, the wrong decisions, i.e. withdrawing the air cover from the, uh, uh, from the Afghan uh, armed forces uh, was a disaster. Uh, and the Americans precipitately did that. And in doing it, they pretty much signed the death warrant of the uh, Afghan armed forces. All these things are absolutely correct. But this last minute affair, I think, is to focus on the wrong end of what was going on. Um, you know, in politics, it's about judgment at times. And should you come back a day or two earlier, Maybe there is an argument for that. But but the truth is, what was going on was going on on the ground out there. And that was due and around uh, how do we get people out uh, and the collapsing situation. What, what about there, the so judgment of the permanent secretaries at the Foreign Office, the Home Office and the Ministry of Defence, who it's emerged in the front page of the Times today, are all on holiday this week? Should they be away on holiday? Personal view, they should be back in their desks. I'm afraid it's a bit rough in the summer. Uh, you know, with COVID and everything else, you've been waiting to go on that holiday. Uh, you've booked it, you look forward to it, and then suddenly a crisis erupts in the middle of August. I can't remember in August when the crisis didn't erupt. But the truth is, I'm afraid it goes with the pay, it goes with the nature. Uh, you know, when a crisis like this erupts, you've got to be back at your desks. Uh, and the politicians are only as good as the advice they get from officials. Uh, and officials, therefore, need to have to be properly led and guided as well. So, I, I, it's hard, but if I was them, I would be back now trying to sort this out, okay. um, the reality. Let's talk about the the big stuff. Um, I mean, so I'm assuming you're saying at this point, Dominic Raab, by the way, should not be resigning. That calls for him to resign from Keir Starmer, Angela Rayner, his deputy and others. The opposition always call for people to resign. Uh, it goes out with breakfast. But the truth is, should he resign? No, he's got a job to do, for God's sake. And if we have a chaos about people suddenly having to go at this point and Everyone pointed the finger. What happens is the people will suffer, the people on the ground. I've got cases at the moment, which I'm trying to contact the Foreign Office for, and the Foreign Secretary has been helping with that, uh, trying to get people out through those barriers at uh, Kabul airport. I've got one this morning I was on very early where we're trying to send a letter to them to say that they have the right and the permission to come out on a flight. This, to me, is what this is all about. Yeah, well, let's, about well, let's focus lives. on that. 963 people have been evacuated in the past 24 hours by UK forces, just 500 uh, the day before. Uh, I say we're going to talk to the, the uh, Defence Minister, James Heapy, about what's going on. We are seeing a situation where it's only with, uh, frankly, the, the, the generosity of the Taliban fighters on the streets of Kabul, allowing people to make it to the airport, uh, allowing people to get through the perimeters of the Taliban fighters and then uh, to have their papers checked by British and American and other uh, allied forces, uh, 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 troops, to before they can get on planes. Um, we're looking at five more days, possibly more of evacuation flights. Um, what, what do you make of the scenes that you are also seeing on the ground? And of course, the phone calls you're getting from people who are desperately seeking to get out of the country, as you just mentioned. 
Well, it's chaotic. Um, we are in the hands of the Taliban, which is pretty much the worst thing that could happen. Uh, the people that I'm talking about, uh, the, you know, there are some who are MPs, uh, others who have worked uh, as security guards, others who have worked as interpreters. They're all the target people, by the way, for the for the Taliban. And we've been seeing executions of this going on across the country. They certainly want to get after politicians that existed. Uh, in the last uh, administration. So, you know, we are having these people filtered through at the last moment, and the Taliban can decide whether this person was one of the ones that they were looking for, and then take them. And there's nothing at the moment we can do about it. So trying to get them out is a really difficult task, but we must persevere. And if it takes longer than five days, it takes longer than five days. We must take it to the final point where we're no longer able to sustain the airport there. But I certainly believe that it is our duty we decided to leave. I understood that. Uh, but the way we've left has plunged these people into chaos. We therefore have to try and get those who served us and helped us is, out. Is the US President Joe Biden right? In an interview with American television, he said, look, you know, he defended his decision. He said there's always going to be chaos at any point that we left. Maybe a lot of people would dispute that in terms of the manner of leaving. Uh, but he's also said, look, our allies, that, you know, Britain and others, they could have chosen to stay if they wanted to. And they didn't. So it's a bit, it's a bit rich to blame America for leaving uh, when they only had a few thousand troops there anyway. Um, he's right, isn't he? There's a book called The Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. And it says, a wonderful quote, it says, the burnt finger returns to the flame. That is the case with Joe Biden. Every interview he does, he just doubles down on his failure. I have to say, I have never been less impressed by an American president than right now I am by Joe Biden. He has attacked the Afghan army, having pulled the air cover from them and decided to go in a hurry. He was the one that set the date of September the 11th, with his meaningless in any other respect, except that it was the 20th anniversary of the uh, strikes on the Twin Towers. He's now uh, accepting that he may have to leave some American troops there for longer than that, if necessary. And only a few weeks ago, he did not say that uh, there was going to be chaos at the airport. He did not say that there would be problems and there would be a collapse like this. And so what is now inevitable to a man looking backwards was not inevitable to a man looking forwards a few weeks ago. So the best thing that President Biden can do is honestly not to do another interview. It's absolutely galling to watch him make mistakes and get it wrong. The truth is we need to sort this out now. And the last thing we need is self-justification from a man that got it so badly wrong that so many people now will suffer. It's been shaming. And the only people that are loving these interviews and loving what's going on in Kabul are China and Russia. China upped its overflying of military aircraft over Taiwan in the last two days. They have threatened Taiwan, telling them that there will be no US military support. Have they not watched Kabul? It's over for them. And when the fight comes, they will lose. Yeah. All of this is going on right now because of the mess in Kabul. And our answer to President Biden is honestly, stow it. For God's sake, stow it. I mean, the repercussions of this uh, decision are going to be felt, we, uh, we think, really for not just uh, many thousands of miles away, but also uh, for many years. Uh, can I also ask you that specifically, um, there's been an intelligence report to the UN that's been revealed saying that yeah, the Taliban are uh, planning reprisals. They are going door to door, despite these uh, nice, shiny, lovely, touchy-feely <clears throat> press conferences. Uh, but also, uh, front page of The Guardian today, 100 guards who you were uh, in charge of protecting the British embassy in Kabul, they have been abandoned, told they are not eligible uh, to come to Britain to get to safety for them and their families, despite the fact they will undoubtedly face reprisals from the Taliban because they were hired by a subcontractor. They weren't directly hired by the embassy. Uh, what do you make of those stories? Well, if they're true, uh, then I simply say to my government, no, you've got it wrong. They came to protect embassy officials. If the Foreign Office is worth anything, or the Ministry of Defence is worth anything, or this government is worth anything, uh, they will immediately reverse that decision and they will do their level best to get those people out. We have no other thing that we should possibly do but save those who have served us. And I think that is a badge of shame if we fail to do it. This should never have happened like this. Yes, we may have wanted to withdraw and we determined that we would. And there is an argument about that and I'm not altogether convinced it was right. But the way in which we are doing it has plunged people into chaos and into direct danger. And you're right about the Taliban. You know, this leopard does not change its spots. It is an extremist uh, organization 
and it doesn't brook dissent at all. That's why those who are congratulating it and now recognizing it immediately, the Chinese and others, are all autocrats themselves. Indeed. Sir Ian Duncan-Smith, MP and former leader of the Conservative Party, thank you very much indeed for joining us.